Hey, this is Stun Gravy, and I wanted to show you how to build your own decoupler launcher. This technique was introduced to me on the Kerbal Space Program forums by user 93, and I've elaborated on it quite a bit. My ship here is just a pod and a large decoupler. When I set it off, it only ends up going about 10 meters. Decouplers exert a fixed force, not speed, so if I make the ship lighter, I'll have a greater velocity. With a light probe, I end up going about 1300 meters in the air before I start to fall. There are lighter ship parts that we can use, but they don't control anything. The trick here is to start my build with a small strut. I'll need to attach a probe core underneath so I can launch, but since it's below the coupler, its mass is irrelevant. Since there's no control in the strut, we need to quickly switch our view in order to follow it after launch. With one large decoupler, we launch a strut to 6600 meters before it begins to fall. The cubic strut, the octagonal strut, and the telescoping ladder all have a special property. Physics significance equals one. This means they have the absolute minimum mass that Kerbal Space Program will allow. It doesn't matter how many we put together, as long as they're all attached, they will have the exact same sum mass. Now we want to go faster, so we add more decouplers. I put the smallest probe under the smallest decoupler, and then start expanding outwards. I usually build like this to keep construction straight, because stability is going to be very important as these things get bigger. You can go with 2, 4, or 8-way symmetry, it doesn't really matter. The decouplers have no problem clipping through each other, just make sure you keep it all on the ground. and make sure that all the decouplers go off at once. As you scale up, you'll notice that there are some problems. One is that the program doesn't like tracking debris when it's still in the atmosphere, and two, we have to deal with atmospheric drag. I don't know how the game calculates it, but not only will it slow you down, but at certain speeds you'll bounce off the atmosphere and come crashing down to the surface. I tried to get around this by putting these up in orbit before launching, but once you get 10 or 20 decouplers, it gets really unstable. Plus, I've found that by putting them directly on the ground, you actually gain more speed per decoupler. The way to get around drag is to simply go so fast that the game doesn't even calculate it. You're on the launch pad one frame and in space the next. I can do this around 50 decouplers, but it might vary based on your computer and settings. You'll probably notice when they get this big, your frames will drop and you have to wait really long loading times. Instead of just switching over to the debris, you'll probably have to go to the tracking station to take a look. When I tried to launch Kerbals, my initial thought was to attach command seats to these monsters and drive a Kerbal up to them and hop in. Usually this ended either in catastrophe, or the ship would just leave without him. One Kerbal ended up getting caught somehow, and got launched over a million meters per second with some pretty bizarre effects, but I haven't been able to repeat this. Then I remembered that the telescoping ladders had no physics significance, so I gave them a shot. I found out if a Kerbal holds onto a ladder at launch, not only do they launch two, but they end up going twice as fast as the structure. With 256 decouplers, I launched one Kerbal at over 6 million meters per second which is about 2% the speed of light, by the way. Pointing it in any particular direction would be difficult, so I had to use the rotation of Kerbin itself to aim, and by angling the ladders, you can actually influence the direction just a little bit. First, I tried to go to EVE, and did Kerbal cluster launches to improve my odds of hitting the planet, but the orbital inclination was making it really hard to get close enough. Duna, however, has very little inclination relative to Kerbin, so I decided to go for that. I waited until the planets are closest in orbit for my launch. I targeted Duna, and through trial and error and a lot of quick loading, I figured out the launch window, which was only about a second long. The orbital aids don't work so well at these speeds, so I watched Jeb fly right over the North Pole and quick loaded back. With a bit of math, I figured out that I needed to burn 50% of my jetpack fuel straight down, and I would be right on target. Another half hour of flight time, and I was there. Briefly. It's what Jeb would have wanted. 
Since it was only 35 minute trip, I did it again without using time warp. It turned out the same, only the impact looked different. I'm trying to think of other cool things to do with this decoupler technology, aside from sending Kerbals to their speedy doom. I'll probably make another video if any pan out. If you have any ideas or questions, please leave a comment.